Hey everybody, Eustace the Monk here with a uh, like, bit of an experimental video, I think. I've been really wanting to do more Hall of Shame videos. They're without a doubt my most popular ones, and I love doing them. My problem is, is that it's difficult to find games that warrant a full 10-15 to 15 minute expose video. People have called them exposés, and I think it's a really good description of what I'm doing here, is an expose. The problem is, is if you abandon your game, you deserve a Hall of Shame award, however... It's not always going to be warranting a full-length video, so finally came up with an idea. We're going to try it out here. We're going to have a little imaginary parade of four or five abandoned early access games. Use your imagination a little bit. Think about maybe seeing something along the lines of a Thanksgiving Day parade or some kind of parade in your town. Got maybe your folding chair sitting beside a street in your city or your town or your city center or whatever and surrounded by fellow gamers, people who may have purchased the game or maybe you're into early access games or just other gamers in general. We're all here to kind of witness the debacle that's going to scroll out in front of us. And I'll be um, your master of ceremonies here. I'm safely ensconced behind bulletproof glass because I'm sure that receiving an award like the Hall of Shame is probably not something that people are really looking forward to a great deal. Before we begin, I think it's important that we keep in mind the what I'll call the Tim Schafer Early Access Rules. And in case if you haven't seen my uh, Space Space DF9 Hall of Shame video, <laughs> I'm calling them the Tim Schafer Early Access Rules. They're the rules that Steam came up with shortly after uh, Double Fine Studios and Tim Schafer, their CEO, decided to abandon Space Space DF9 and call it finished even though it wasn't, based on the excuse that they weren't getting enough sales through Early Access. And it's important to remember these rules because I think they're going to come up. Particularly, uh, rule number one is going to come up in today's parade, I think, quite a bit. Um, I see the first float coming around the corner, so we'll, we'll be brief. Uh, rule number one is, quote, Don't launch in early access if you can't afford to develop with very few or no sales. And then it goes on to kind of elaborate, there is no guarantee that your game will sell as many units as you anticipate. If you are counting on selling a specific number of units to survive and complete your game, then you need to think carefully about what it would mean for you and your team if you don't sell that many units. Are you willing to continue developing the game without any sales? Are you willing to seek other forms of investment? <laughs> well, we'll just keep those in mind um, as the first float comes around the corner and it's... It's kind of a strange little um, contraption. It's uh, just a kludge of plywood boards just kind of nailed together with two or three PCs and young men with beards and headsets furiously playing video games and there's a, a kind of a taskmaster hovering over them, shouting at them as they play. Oh, this must be... Oh, this is for PGM2. This is our first um, award winner for Abandoned Games, PGM2. PGM2, I think, is pretty appropriate. that <laughs> They're the very first float in our parade here. They, they get a uh, special mention because they were in early access only about five days before declaring bankruptcy and telling everyone that they would not be developing the game any further. It's essentially a professional gaming manager simulator. You manage a team of professional gamers and you win money and recruit people, I guess, blah blah blah. I've never actually played it. There was one that I was luckily avoided, but I think that it's... <laughs> it's pretty funny that it only lasted five days. Here's the announcement here. Pro Gamer Manager 2 is now available. Finally, we made it on October 5th. Out now on Steam. Yay! Here's the farewell December 10th. Dear community, this is a sad day for us, and this announcement is very hard to write. Uh, we needed to see the community's blood, and that the sales looked okay to be able to continue with the development. W what about that rule number one? Oh, it, well, it doesn't apply to us, I, I guess. Unfortunately, this has not been the case, and we are unable to continue the development of PGM2. There simply isn't enough money to sustain the development financially. Oh dear. Oh well. Our first financial... Uh, uh, this will be our first official patch for the game. We are very saddened by this. Blah, blah, blah. Um, file for bankruptcy. You know, blah, blah, blah. I, I, I really have to wonder... How do you know that there's not going to be enough interest in five days? That seems like very... You were in trouble before you entered into early access. There's no two ways about it. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Five days is... nothing. The fun part is, the really fun part is, is that you can still buy this game on Steam. Here it is. Uh, even though they've declared bankruptcy and they've declared that 
it is no longer going to be supported and there's no longer going to be developed, you can buy an unfinished game on Steam. It's because Valve aggressively doesn't care about what goes on on Steam. They just want their 30% of the sales for this piece of garbage. It is still available on Steam. You can buy it for the very low price of $19.99, US dollars. You can buy it right now. Still in early access. Never going to be supported ever again. I think that just speaks volumes of Valve's quality control on Steam. The, the fact that it doesn't exist. And we all know this. So, here's our... Oh, and the the parade float's now been abandoned while I've been talking. They've, they've jumped off and have scurried away into the various alleyways and behind dumpsters and stuff. Hey, um... Get that... Get that float out of here. We, we've got another float coming around. Make sure, make sure they get their, uh, their award, too. We've got... You know, the, the Crying Cherub Awards. Each of our developers today, they get a special little virtual Crying Cherub Award. Here I see our next float coming around the bend. Wow, it's like a flatbed truck with a little campfire in the center. And there's these two, three, four weirdos dancing in these strange dance around the campfire. And they're wearing these weird, like, spacesuit looking rubber suits. And they're, they're I can hear this... Yeah, you can hear it too, the strange techno boppy music that they're playing in a little boom box that one of them's got on his shoulder. What in the hell? Oh, this is... Oh, okay, everybody. This is Grav. This is this is the float for Grav. <laughs> yeah, I reviewed Grav not eh, about a year or so ago. I didn't like it. It was a shitty game. And then I did a update for it to cover the massive update that they did. It was like a Grav Reborn kind of update. It pretty much went from the 100 Acre Woods on Acid sci-fi sandbox multiplayer game to a little bit, they really improved the graphics on the update, but it was still a boring grind fest MMO type game that I could not recommend and it was horrible and boring and I didn't enjoy it at all. And now it looks like it's totally dead, unfortunately. Uh, I haven't seen uh, an update in about a year now. Looks like... Bitmonster hasn't updated their Twitter since February 15th, 2017, so almost a year ago. Website's been even longer since it's been updated, May 9th, 2016. Folks in the Steam community page have done some digging and have found out that they work for Epic Games now, so folks at Bitmonster aren't at Bitmonster anymore. Pretty much Bitmonster as an entity probably doesn't exist and has no employees, and therefore Grav probably is not going to be developed any longer. The servers, if you can connect to them, uh, there's some jibber-jabber on the forums about server performance and how you, it's very difficult to log on. I tried the other day and I was able to get on, but uh, it's just as vacant as it was before, so multiplayer, <laughs> forget it. Single player, this game is like a grind fest MMO, uh, very boring, uh, very incomplete, very not fun. But... <laughs> Guess what, folks? Guess what? You can still buy Grab. <laughs> Even though we know it's not going to be supported anymore, you can buy it for, again, $19.99 on Steam. Because, well, I already beat that dead horse. But, you know, hey, another dead early access game, abandoned early access game. They didn't even have the balls to say that they're done with it, that they just moved on with their lives. Oh, and then there goes the float down the street, folks, just like the employees leaving Bitmonster. <laughs> Alrighty, with that float going on down the road, here comes the next one around the corner. It's, it looks... it's really bizarre. It's like a... it's a little car filled with people who are just, like, crying. They're just handing hankies back and forth. What, what kind of... I guess they look like young programmer types. I don't know. They're just crying and sobbing and carrying... Oh! Okay, everybody, this is the uh, Star Fringe Adversus float. Um, yeah, this one actually makes me kind of sad, too. I, I reviewed it about, gosh, eight months ago or so. Right off the top of my head, I can't quite remember. But it was actually a fun little game. It had a nugget of a really interesting and different sci-fi kind of strategy game. But it just was crippled with game-breaking bugs and it needed a lot of work and love before it could be anything that you would recommend and you know of course I gave it a thumbs down because you know I call them like I see them won't go into too much detail 
click in the upper right hand corner there and the magic of modern YouTuber technology will bring you to my previous review if you want to take a look at it. Unfortunately it seems like the game didn't sell well enough to warrant further development and in summer of last year they decided to call it quits. Here I've got a copy of the posting on Steam here for you. We have no sales, no money for this. Interest in the project was minimal. What about that rule number one? I just, I keep remembering it like... Uh, seems that apart from those remarkable people who participated in the discussion, our project was not needed by anyone. Oh, gosh. The distribution of keys and sales and bundles did nothing to help it. I... I assume that the developer has complete control over that. I don't know how that works. I assume that if you said, I don't want to distribute free keys, that they don't. And it goes on. We're just a small indie team. You know, I had personal money. Search of a publisher. We could blah, blah, blah. Early access was a mistake. We acknowledge this bitterly. Oh, we're so discouraged. But we managed to get a little funding for another project that's almost finished. You know, I just, I'm sorry. I, you know, it made me sad that they decided to call it quits, but you abandon your game when people paid for it, and you get a Hall of Shame award. That's just the way it works. So, hey, you know, rule number one is rule number one. Oh, and they ask you to please don't leave negative reviews. Almost a year now, we not had a single sale. Okay, maybe the flood of indie games on Steam is, we maybe we're looking at another casualty of that. I don't know, but hey. But you can still buy the game. You can still buy the game for, it's around seven bucks. Even though they've said they're not continuing any kind of development on it. Isn't that great? Well, yeah, I've beaten that dead horse enough. <laughs> yeah, get, get, get them their award, please. Yeah. Time for the next float, thanks. Alrighty, here comes the next float. It's just a person with a... Wow, all it is is a wheelbarrow with a big loudspeaker in it and a emaciated fellow pushing it along and he's got earplugs. Oh my god, what the hell is that sound? God, shut, shut that shit up now. Oh, god, oh thank you, what the... What? Up there, well, the police are escorting him away. That's... Oh my god. God, what the hell was that sound? Oh, oh, oh my. <laughs> this one must be the Orlight float. The Orlight, yes. This is another game that I reviewed. Oh, gosh, it must be a year, year and a half ago now. And that that sound, I should have recognized it right away. It was the uh, mining noise, the noise that the character made whenever he would outstretch his hands and suck up the, the rocks around him to go mining. It was... The most obnoxious sound I think I've ever heard in a video game, and if you blast it in public, well, we see what happens is that you get arrested by the cops and carted away. And thank goodness, too. It's uh, get, get that wheelbarrow out of here, too. God damn. Ugh, some people. Anyway, Orlight, uh, I'm not sad to see in, in the parade. It was a terrible game from the get-go. It's another prime example of why you shouldn't do a multiplayer-focused game in early access. There just simply isn't a player base for it and you'll end up with empty servers and if you're relying on the multiplayer to make the game fun it's not going to be any fun because there's nobody playing it or light is a prime example it's basically designed to be a multiplayer game from the ground up there was hardly anyone playing it and now the servers are down the servers have been deactivated there's no way to actually play online so now all you can do is play single player on your own computer and it's a horrible experience they also lied a great deal about the sophistication of the AI that they employed. I go into way more detail in my two reviews of it. I did an initial review and then a follow-up. And the follow-up was pretty hilarious because I tried going online and playing, and I was, of course, utterly alone. And it became quite obvious that when playing online hooked up to a server, the movements were so jerky that it's pretty obvious it wasn't communicating well with the server. And also the server software hadn't been updated with the latest version of the game. It's pretty hilarious. Uh, go ahead and check that out. But yeah, Orlight, one of the worst games I've ever played for this channel. The worst game was Towns. I think Orlight is a pretty close second because it was pretty obvious that they weren't trying very hard. So yeah, uh, Orlight. Fuck you, Orlight. Just fuck you.
But one small nugget of good news is that Orlite has been removed from Steam. You can no longer purchase it. So, for once, Valve steps in and removes some shit from their storefront. For once. For once. <laughs> well, alright, here comes the next float, and... Oh, it's not really a float, and I... Unlike the others, I instantly recognize which game it is. It's... Well, if you crane your neck, you can see there's a lot of people of varying heights and genders dressed as the little greys that you might be familiar with, like X-Files and you know, modern UFO mythology, I guess. You know, they've got little silver spacesuits on, running around, and with little ray guns in the air, waving them in the air, and say, take me to your leader, and all kinds of shit. Somebody... Like trip one or something, please. This this is for a game that fills me full of mixed feelings, definitely called Isomer. I actually was supporting Isomer before they became an early access game. Uh, I don't remember how I found them online, or rather him. It was a sole developer in the UK who was making it. It was a, a fascinating and had promised to be a really fun and different game. It was essentially reverse XCOM, where you were the aliens invading a human world. You started with just your ship and you would run around with your workers and mine resources and, and have your soldiers kind of fight off the attacking human beings who would understandably like for you to leave their planet. <laughs> it was a real-time game, and it was had a lot of bugs, unfortunately, but it was... I paid $10 for it. It was amazingly fun. Its main problem was that it was real time and it was hard to, after a while, keep track of what was all going on because it wouldn't auto-pause for combat and the on-screen notifications weren't as good as they could have been. But, I mean, it was a game that was in development. And we were actively participating on the forums and it was great and the developer was there talking to us all the time. And the absolute crescendo was he was accepted to be part of the early access program on Steam and everyone was cheering and a lot of fun and happiness was being had and then the developer dropped off the face of the planet. Yeah, I'm having to play YouTube videos because I can't get footage from my copy of the game. He has not responded to my requests for Steam keys that he promised us as early um, hackers. It is not being in development. As a matter of fact, to the best of my knowledge, has not received a single update since entering the Steam Early Access program. Uh, we don't know what happened to him. Is he dead? Is he ill? Maybe, maybe people say that maybe his health has shit the bed. But quite frankly, that's what I hear from a lot of early access abortion stories, frankly. My health is too bad, I don't have time, I need to earn money, blah 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 blah. So, yeah, as we see the cavalcade of little dressed up people running down the street, we're forced to wonder why, again, this will come as a surprise to no one, that Isomer is still available for $9.99 on Steam, when it hasn't seen a single update for, uh, gosh, at least 18 months, 24 months. I mean, we don't know why, because, again, Valve aggressively doesn't care about Steam. They just want that 30%. And if you think otherwise, then we've got some bad news for you. Well, with that last fiasco rolling around the bend, here comes our final float for the evening. Wow, it's a giant robot that's ponderously trudging down the street. There seems to be a lot of, I guess, stereotypical game developer-looking people clinging to its back and arms as it's plodding down the street laboriously, and it's... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Um, it's, it's... looks like it's starting to work to the side a little... Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, oh my. Well, it, it seems to have fallen over its own feet and completely come apart in the middle of the street, as you can see. It parts everywhere. There's people scrambling. It, the, the police are on their way yet again. We've got two or three police summonses here. That's really awesome. <laughs> What? Oh, this must be for Servo. This is for the game Servo. Rudimentary RTS game. You fought through maps and there was a little campaign involved. And one thing that was kind of fun about it was that you could customize your little mechs, add parts to them, kind of tinker with their weapon layout, that sort of thing. The problem was is that it was really designed to be a multiplayer game, again shouldn't be multiplayer games on early access, but hey, whatever. And the game operation itself was very much reliant on being hooked up to the official servers, and that's how they would award you with robot parts and all that kind of good stuff. 
I was going to do a little review on it. It was still a little too early for prime time, so I decided to kind of hold off on it. Quite a funny story attached to how this game ended up here in our parade. The developers, they partnered with Stardock to provide them with the servers that they needed and with funding and all that kind of good stuff. And they apparently had quite a falling out with Stardock. They decided to go their own separate ways and lost all their servers, which is a real problem for a game like Servo because you can't really play it without the servers. And one thing led to another, and pretty much the game is now in limbo. Been abandoned, officially abandoned. They're no longer able to work on it anymore. They don't have any more development money. The only refreshing thing about Servo is that they've pretty much admitted that development has been abandoned. They no longer have money to continue developing the game. With their relationship with Stardock being what it is, their servers are gone. There's nothing that they can do to move forward. Unlike many of the other games, though, it has been removed from Steam. You can call it up on the Steam page, but you can no longer buy it which I guess is one small consolation for this final float in our little imaginary parade of Early Access Hall of Shame entrance. So with that, I will wrap up our little parade here. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, the authorities are beginning to clear away the rubble of the servo float as it's crashed and wrecked all over the city street here. And hopefully we'll be doing one of these again, not too far in the future. I'm thinking we might do another parade based on games that were released but fell quite short of their promised features. <laughs> but we'll see how this one goes. Um, take care. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you real soon.